Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace. This is a podcast style show where we take one topic and we break it up into five episodes in a series so that we can all get as much as we can out of it. And this week we're talking about viruses. Little teeny guys that infect everybody, but they're not all bad. Don't you worry. If you haven't seen the other episodes in this series, go back and watch them. We're in part four where we're going to find out how we fight viruses. Viruses are not bacteria. So I want to say right off the top, don't take antibiotics to fight viruses because that's for bacteria. These are not the same thing. It won't do any good. Viruses infect us and our immune system has ways to fight it off, but the only real way to stop a virus medically is with vaccinations. There are other ways, things you can do to help boost your immune system, but again, antibiotics, nothing. They don't help. So when a virus actually gets into our body, it gets in there somehow, the first thing that happens is the first line of defense, white blood cells, macrophages. They eat viruses, that's what they do. White blood cells aren't like out there punching. They're literally consuming the infection. And then the white blood cell itself is filtered from the bloodstream. That's why when you have a viral infection, again, your lymph nodes, which are in your armpits and your groin and your neck, get swollen because they're filled with all of these white blood cells that are fighting that infection. If you get an infected cut, pus, that's white blood cells that have eaten the infection. So it's gross, but it's actually, it's a good thing, right? If it's too strong and the white blood cells can't fight it off, they call in antibodies. Antibodies, we've probably all heard of. Again, vaccinations are things that help create antibodies. Antibodies are made by an immune cell called a B cell. The B cells like T cells and macrophages are all parts of our immune system, which is a pretty uh, complex structure that helps protect our body. And what happens is antibodies come in and they say, oh, there's a virus here. And I know what this virus is, so if I bind to it like this, then that virus can't replicate. They have to know what virus it is, though. So they can also tag other viruses and bind with them so that other, like white blood cells, know to eat that one. T cells, another kind of immune cell, also are raised during an infection. T cells uh, do different things. Some T cells just raise the alarm for the virus and says, oh my gosh, there's an infection. Call out the white blood cells and the B cells. Get them out here. And other T cells kill the cells that the viruses have already hit, which is to say, if I'm a virus and I've infected a cell and a T cell spots me, it raises the alarm. And then another T cell comes in and says, this cell is infected and it needs to die. So they kill it. Isn't that crazy? This is all happening all the time in our bodies. This is going on right now. It's like an incredible voyage. So the body makes one billion white cells every single day to keep on top of infections. B and T cells are kept forever in this like little library in your body so that it knows these are the viruses to get. The body has to learn to fight these new infections though. Antibodies don't work unless they already know that this virus is gonna bind in this way. And that's where vaccines come in handy. So what they do is they take a dead or damaged virus and they inject it into your body. Essentially, the DNA of this virus is there, but the virus has been deactivated. So your antibodies can get made when they come in contact with this virus. Because essentially what happens is your body kind of uses trial and error. It's like, this antibody worked? Nope. This antibody worked? Nope. This one worked? Okay, cool. Make more of those and do it fast. And if that happens, the next time that virus shows up, your body already has an idea of how to fight it, so it can just skip to that last step. Of course, sometimes it doesn't work, which is why flu shots have to happen every season, because one season it's H2, you know, H2N, another time it's H2N4, another time it's H2N6. You don't know until, you know, the flu season actually starts. And all of those are different mutations of the influenza virus, so they all need different antibodies. Other ways your body can get ahead is to prompt cells to fight bacteria. One study found that even though bacteria and viruses are completely different, if you use a protein that's present in the tails of some of the bacteria, bacteria sometimes have a little tail called a flagella. If you use a protein that's found on that flagella, they will somehow be prompted to fight viruses. Your, Your immune system will somehow be prompted to fight viruses if they show up. They're not sure why, 
But when injections of this protein was done in mice, viruses were also affected in that mouse, even though the structures were different, the genes were different. It's like, this is the medical equivalent of sending out the army and somehow getting results as if you sent out the Air Force. It just doesn't make sense. But it does, they think, make a sense in that developing countries, their children fight viruses better, perhaps because they're constantly prompted to be fighting off bacteria. You can also fight viruses with other viruses because viruses are sort of like the hackers of nature. And so they can get into a cell and mess it up and do what they want. But the researchers have learned how to hack the hackers. So let me put it this way. HIV, terrible infection, killed 36 million people since the 1980s, really bad in Africa. And what it does is when it infects you, it doesn't just infect any cell. They attack the T cells, which are one of those immune cells. So what happened is medical researchers created this thing called TIPS, T-I-P-S. And it's literally just chunks of HIV. But the chunks are missing the part that require, that's required for it to self-replicate. So since it can't self-replicate, but it knows that it's HIV still, it seeks out other HIV, figuring if it bonds to that, then it will be able to replicate. But instead, it bonds to it and pretty much makes HIV useless because the HIV has to compete with these weird bonded TIPS viruses in order to get the same resources that it used to have on its own. Plus, the researchers hacked the HIV TIPS chunks so that they make HIV inert. They inhibit HIV. This can delay the onset of AIDS, or the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, which you get after being HIV positive for a while. This can delay that onset for five to 10 years. And what they're doing is they're hacking viruses to fight viruses. It's so cool. So viruses can be super useful because we can reprogram them. We can use them for, gu for, for good. And this hasn't just been done in tips. They've also used the HIV virus specifically to help cure leukemia. They hacked the virus, and instead of attacking T cells, now it attacks leukemia cells, and it kills those cancer cells. And in one case of a young girl, it actually cured her of leukemia, which is crazy. Of course, viruses, because it's humans hacking them, can also be used for evil. So biological weapons like smallpox, which aren't hacked, but can be used to, if they ever brought that back, to kill lots and lots of people. And there are samples of smallpox in labs around the world, though I looked around and there are enough vaccines of smallpox that as long as we spotted it early, we'd be okay here in the US at least. But how do you feel about viruses now? After knowing all this stuff, how do you feel? Let me know down in the comments and I'll get down there and talk to you about it as well. Maybe help you feel better if you don't already. Make sure you subscribe for more Test Tube Plus and tomorrow we're gonna have the last episode in this series. So make sure you come back and check that out because this is gonna be real cool. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.